Hello again, it's Pegasus with another headline to decipher for you. And I did post about this recently in the community section. I anagrammed the name of this animal and came up with some interesting things. And I kind of want to zoom in on a couple of those a little closer. So I'm making this video about it. But we're going to talk about Thailand's viral sensation, Hippo Mudang. The hippo's name is Mu Dang, right? So it's a baby pygmy hippo. It's about two months old, which I find very interesting. It may be three months old now, but it was last July that I posted my video about hungry, hungry hippos. And then one year later, this little pygmy hippo was born in Thailand and has become a viral sensation. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So what I did, I just was intrigued by the name, right? So I anagrammed it and I came up with a whole bunch of things. And when I posted it in the community section, some other folks left other ones in the comments too. So it's, it was only a few days ago, so you shouldn't have to scroll far to find that post. But I'll share a few of them here and a couple more I thought of since, like cow dung. Now, that's not an exact anagram. It's dang, not dung, right? But it got me thinking about methane emissions from a cow's rear end, right? And how there's been a big stink about that. <laughs> Spontaneous pun. Uh... But cow dung can be used for fertilizer or, and or fuel, right? You can actually burn the dry cow patties and use it for fuel. So it might not really have so much to do with methane emissions and climate change as it does limiting people's ability to collect something that they could use as fertilizer and or fuel for free, <sighs> right? You just go out into some field or other and collect dung. Yeah, this was done by the pioneers forging west across America with bison's poop, same thing. And it was just laying everywhere, free as can be, right? Well, if they start eliminating bison and, and moo cows, there will be less opportunities for that, right? Same with chickens. You know, chicken poo makes great fertilizer. Uh, yeah. Anywho, moving on. Nog dome, right? Nog dome, so this is like your skull. Or you think eggnog, so uh, an eggshell, right? <clears throat> then you have Generation Doom. We got Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, Gen Doom. Or if you replace a G with a J, it could be like me. <laughs> Am I Gen Doom? Gosh, I hope not. I'm really trying to uh, stick with the higher vibing timelines when I when I talk about the future. However, I do think it's important to be aware of alternate timeline scenarios that you might accidentally fall into if you're not savvy and clever and aware of your surroundings. My dad would say, be alert. The world needs more alerts. <laughs> then we have Eng Doom, E-N-G Doom. So this could be like the, the English language, which has a lot of limitations built into it. Um, yeah, English Doom, or like the English were, is a slang term for European white folks, right? So you might say the Native Americans might call the invading, marauding white folks that came over from Europe the English, right? Even though they weren't all English, I suppose. Maybe they were, did only refer to the English, like from England. But it could be seen as a language, too. All right. And then we have... Two that I really want to focus on here, like uh, and Moog. So 
I talked about the Moog synthesizer recently with Lothar and the Hand People, and it, synthesizer, things synthesized, as in not natural, right? Not native, not organic, not natural. So there's this here word with a G and an M and a O, right? Now, I talked about this way back in one of my very first live streams, and I believe it's called Let's Talk Vapor Canopy, y'all. And I discussed the work of the channel Griffin Chicken. I binge-watched all of her videos before they foofed off of YouTube back in 2021. What remains of those videos are still, as last I checked, available on the Odyssey channel? A platform, sorry. <clears throat> I can't remember how to spell it, so you'll have to look it up if you're not already on there, but it's Odyssey. The It's another video platform, right? Um, and the channel is called Illegally Blind. And that's where you can find what remains of Griffin Chicken's videos. And in them, I learned this little tidbit. I gotta pause again. That these, uh, these types of synthesized, created species, which, by the way, this uh, Mu Dang might get patented, I read. And that's, uh, we're not going to go into that necessarily right now. What Griffin Chicken said was, when we head into, she didn't call it the vapor canopy, but basically that was what she was describing. That those, those types of false, non-natural creations, plants, animals, anything, would not survive. Something to think about, for sure. So I described that in that video, which I, I might be able to tag it. If not at the end of this one, I'll put it in the description box. And also, you know, lies and falsehoods, things that are synthesized, made up, right? So the end of falsehoods and lies. That's a good thing, definitely. Oh, another thing Griffin Chicken mentioned what would not survive in a vapor canopy would be things like plastics. They, it, just doesn't thrive in a high ozone environment. Plastics, right? So, again, things that are false, not natural, right? Then we come to the last one there. Genodump, like a kingdom, only with genes based on, uh, instead of like king's lineage, right? I mean, it's very similar in that they they look out for their bloodlines, right? So you want to keep it in the family, which is kind of not healthy, <laughs> but that's what they do to maintain their genetic purity and know who's next in line for the kingdom, right? So this brings up apartheid, right? And delineating people and separating them out, separate but equal, by race, by religion, by genetics, species, um, typhoid Mary, medical apartheid. Who, who, did you get waxed or didn't you? Right? Um, South Africa, apartheid. Israel and Palestine. And I have a little side note here because what I wrote was is and pal because I was running out of room on my card. And then I remembered PAL I had for papal, P-A-P-A-L, as in the Pope. It reminded me of PayPal, right? Indulgences, buying salvation from the Catholic Church. PayPal, papal. And then that brings in palace. So there we are with the kingdom again. This PAL, who's your buddy? Who's your pal? That's from Stripes, Bill Murray. Yeah, separate but equal versus the melting pot. And I've talked about small communities where people are self-governing 
as a community based on shared values, goals, ideals, philosophies. And, and a lot of that is race or species or religion based. People base their philosophy of life and their goals and ambitions and dreams and, and all of that is wrapped up quite often in their identity as a particular race, species, or religion, or something along those lines. That could be differentiated, delineated between you and someone else with a blood test, or a cheek swab, or something like that. Something to determine your blood type or your DNA. And then you could be separated out from each other. Star, you have the star belly sneeches and you have the sneeches, right? So we could talk about internment camps. In the United States, it was the Japanese. In Germany, it was various different groups. But these were prisoners of war, you know, and that happens in wartime scenarios. So I'm, I don't want to get into the politics involved. I'm just pointing out these examples from history, right? Certainly we've had a lot of that sort of black versus white civil unrest in this country. And I mentioned South Africa and Israel and Palestine, same sorts of issues. So then I came to um, Dolly the sheep, the, the clone. What kind of rights does the clone have or the copy? Any? The Congress is a, is a movie where she gives up her rights to act in movies that she wants to and not act in movies that she doesn't want to. She can't act in any movies anymore because she sold a copy of herself to a company that can put the copy in any movie it wants and the copy doesn't have any rights at all as to what movies they are. They can put them in a porno, <laughs> and the copy could protest, but do they have rights? And are, are if we're in a simulation, are we copies? I've discussed these sorts of issues before. So if, if Mu Dang here is going to be patented, what who has rights over Mu Dang's life? It's a, it's a hippo, right? And it's in a zoo or in some sort of captive scenario, set the captives free, pardon the dolly, forgive them, for they know not what they do. These sorts of issues are what's come up for me, just with this name, Mudang. Sophia. So let's talk about Sophia, the AI robot who is now a citizen of Saudi Arabia. Oh, there's a whole different class of being entity, I'm not even sure what to call this entity. I really don't. Yeah. <clears throat> Brings back Bob and Alice, the Facebook AIs that created their own language and were talking to each other and we couldn't understand what they were saying and they were deactivated. Well, who made that decision, you know? And who programmed them to begin with? What is their learning capacity? And at what point would we say that they had earned the right to have rights versus being patented or owned by someone else, right? Who is native versus who is alien? Oh, aliens. Do aliens have rights? What if the aliens were... Or, or the, you know, Sophia's or the clones. What if they did not know they were not human? They're raised human in human families, and it's not until they have their guts ripped open in front of them that they realize, uh-oh, shoot, I'm full of wires. I'm not human. Wait, wait a minute. Or The Island, the movie The Island, where the clones are being raised as humans. They think they're humans. They're cloned humans, and for a very specific purpose to provide spare organs for the original. <laughs> they, they come to this awareness in a, 
Escape and whatnot. Interesting movie. Discusses these kinds of issues. Um, let me just check real quick if I've caught... Oh, who is native? Bill the Butcher. And I, I like Bill the Butcher's character, especially where he says, well, I'm native. I was born here. These people coming up over on boats, they're not native. They were not born here. So I may have a, the tiniest little bit of Native American, Lenape. You know, I'm from the Philadelphia area. So I have the tiny little bit of Lenape in my genetics. But nobody would, like, try and say that I'm Native American per the definition that we've come to understand. But I'm with Bill the Butcher. I was born here. There's no reason I should not be considered a Native American. In fact, my parents were born here too. And half of my four grandparents were born here too. In fact, maybe three quarters. I think only one of my grandparents was born overseas. So I am a Native American. Even though I don't look it and I have very little... <clears throat> Indian blood or, or whatever in me, right? Let me pause and see if I've got all my thoughts on here. The last little bit I wrote under Bill the Butcher is five points. So the, the number five, right? 2025 and five points. Now, this was the, the part of New York City where Bill the Butcher and his gang ruled, right? That's the location, the setting of the Gangs of New York movie. And it's an actual place in New York, and I, I believe it still is. And not only New York City, but other places have places in them called Five Points also. And I, one of them was just recently in the headlines, and I think it was some sort of weather disaster, but I don't recall. But it does have the number five, and it's a location that you can find in various different places around the world. So something to keep an eye on in the headlines are things that happen in places that might be called five points. Also, it brings up the fifth element, which is love, y'all, right? So Love conquers all this stuff, you know, like separate but equal. How fair is that? We want to think about justice for everybody. If it's not good for everyone, it's not good for anyone, right? And Ubuntu, I am because we are. Yeah, so very interesting little decode of the name of this pygmy hippo. Um. Handicap conditions, uh, another thing, because it's got the pygmy in there, so you think, like, small, miniature. Um, yeah, lots of cool and interesting things to think about. We don't want to end up in a situation where we're pointing fingers at each other and saying this or that group of people needs to be locked up out of some sort of irrational fear, especially based on lies, you know, which we have seen quite a bit of and done. End Moog. <laughs> End the false hoods and lies and things synthesized, right? Back to nature, natural, things that are good and healthy for everyone. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day.